Hello and welcome to the download. I'm your host, Dave Richardson, and it is a controversial episode of Stu's Days. Uh, Stu, uh, welcome back. We, 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 we missed last week, but uh, you, you look like you're in, 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 a, in, a, in a good space now. I'm in, I'm in my office, which is always a bit of a fun space. I do, I do like, uh, I do like being in front of the screens and everything, if that's what you mean. But, uh, um, well, well, let, let me tell you where it gets controversial, Stu, because I'm in, I'm in Vancouver today and I'm walking down this street and I was looking for a bite, a, a place to eat. And I, I see this, uh, this restaurant and it's a, a pho restaurant or pho, you know, the P-H-O. I yep. believe it's pronounced pho. And, and it said, every day is Thursday, day, P-H-O-S <laughs> day. So maybe they have taken over Stu's days. It's not Stu's days. It's, it's Thursdays. Yeah. What, uh, what do you, what do you, are you, well, every, do, everyone, should we fight them on this? No, everyone needs their day. Everyone needs their day. Everyone, every dog has its day. That's right. That's right. Wow, so that's very, uh, very magnanimous of you, Stu. You're, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's, I guess that's why everyone likes you so much. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, it, or it's your investment knowledge, but, but, uh, what's not controversial, and what is positive. Lots happened in the last two weeks since since we connected. So we had the Fed rate cut, 50 basis points. We had this uh, stimulus package out of China, which has uh, has actually. After a few disappointing shots at, at stimulus, it, it looks like they've kind of nailed it this time because people are pretty excited about it. We've seen some markets move. Uh, markets continue to hit all-time highs. Uh, so, so wrap it all up in terms of what you've been watching the last two weeks. What, what, what's interesting you and and what it means? Yeah, well, it's uh, it's interesting because uh, um, you know we started off we started off with the Fed and and. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, have your bowl of popcorn waiting for the Fed to come out. Uh, and, um, you know, and you kind of like the, the market went up and down and up and down on the Wednesday afternoon. And, you know, you kind of go home and you, you watch. Like, I think the thing that I think the thing that we need to always try and remember is we're trying to separate, uh, you know, what what will take time and what will come out over time with letting the price action, uh, you know, determine the narrative. That people want to go home. So, you know, the Fed, the Federal Reserve went 50 basis points and said, and said, you know, kind of said like, don't expect 50 all the time, right? Which, uh, you know, some market uh, participants called it a hawkish 50, like, uh, uh, you know, kind of the way to start, but it still wasn't, you know, quite uh, the excitement that that the stock market wanted on Wednesday. And then we came in on Thursday, and it was a rip show, and all of a sudden it was exactly what the stock market wanted. And I think we have to be careful, you know, determining like. We don't want the narrative to be determined by the price action. Yeah. So, you know, generally speaking, um, you know, by going 50, does it improve the odds of a soft landing? I think the answer to that's probably yes. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing is along the way, we've had, you know, some more economic data that hasn't has been pretty good, yeah. uh, all things considering. Um, so, you know, yields have kind of found a level. They're just kind of, uh, you know, sitting here. Inflation. Um, is, you know, remains benign. If anything, like, you know, we got to be a little bit watchful on the inflation front. Not that it's, you know, going back to, you know, any levels we've seen, but, um, you know, it, it gets a little bumpier uh, from here and uh, you know, may be a little bit more dependent on things like shelter and auto insurance, a few other things. But, uh, you know, so yields have come down to a level which, uh, you know, should assist the economy. Uh, the economy still seems to be in okay shape. People are watching uh, unemployment, as we've discussed, I think that's going to be a, a really, you know, crucial feature. And, um, you know, you had markets on the headline level that were uh, valuation is elevated, um, you know, for, uh, you know, a couple of things to the positive, right, is that, you know, margins are wider, profitability is up, returns on capital are higher than they've been historically. So maybe that supports a modestly higher valuation, but still, you know, higher, right? Like, you know, not not out of the range of comfort, but on a headline basis, a little bit more elevated. And you know, from a scenario analysis standpoint, it's it's those valuations are based on earnings that will see even better margins uh, going forward. So we need to really think through that. But the other side to that is the average stock looks not too bad. And um, and then we had uh, 
you had a variety of, of other news, like uh, Microsoft came out and, and you know, signed a deal to restart a nuclear power plant. And um, <laughs> three mile island, no less. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. But, you know, and, and, you know, significant for the company that's doing the restart, but also a reminder of the uh, mountains of CapEx that sits in the pipeline. And will that CapEx lead up to live up to expectations for some of the highest valued stocks? Time will tell. But nevertheless, for the economy, it is CapEx. Like there's going to be a lot of money that's still the flow. So, you know, that came along. Uh, you know, the, the yield curve it continued to get even more positive slope, which, uh, you know, helps some financial stocks. So the market broadened a little bit as well. Yeah. So that's positive. It didn't quite have this what we call like a breadth thrust, like, uh, you know, this kind of lots of stocks hitting 20 day highs all at once. But, you know, generally speaking, it was it's somewhat constructive. And then and then, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, China came along with just a, a couple of days in a row of more significant announcements. And, you know, will they be a successful? You know, time will tell. But the reaction in markets has been uh, quite strong, quite, uh, you know, quite significant. And one of the quotes that's uh, uh, written on my wall, uh, you know, all the different investors, but you know, one of them, which I love is opinions about facts set prices, right? So it's too early to tell whether or not uh, all these announcements out of China will actually, you know, stimulate the economy. But the initial opinion about it is it will. Um, and you've had kind of two surges in the Chinese markets. You had one, then you had a little brief period, and then you had the second following on. And they do look a little bit more serious about uh, trying to stimulate and get to their get to their economic goals. And then, you know, that kind of brought a whole bunch of other stocks to participate. The material stocks and things like this with, you know, copper kind of bouncing off $4 and reaccelerating. So, yeah, I probably meandered all over the place there. But, um, you know, it has been uh, it has been an eventful couple of weeks. And I would say most of those events at the margin have been a positive uh, for sentiment on the average stock. Well, well, I'm not surprised, though, when I threw, threw down the gauntlet on Thursday and that's a soup. Yeah. You are going to go to the investment <laughs> stew, which is your oh. which is your stick. And yeah. so, uh, of course, and and everyone loves the investment stew because there's a lot in there. It's meaty, all kinds of fun stuff to talk about and, and consume. And so uh, so that was a that was that was a great synopsis. But, but uh, you know, I've, I've been doing uh, I've been doing this other uh, video series uh, thing with 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 a lot of different PMs, portfolio managers. And, and, and this, this idea around CapEx spend uh, was, was kind of a common theme. And then the, the idea that, you, you know, you have, you have had some of these big companies that uh, particularly in the AI space who are, uh, you know, who, who you know, they've had un, in, unbelievable runs. They're just cash cows. So they've got the cash to go and spend. And now they're just dumping billions of dollars of CapEx in. And it's starting to, you know, it's, it's, you see the effect it's having on, say, an NVIDIA as one stock that we've talked about. But it broadens out to a lot of other companies that are going to be a part of this in, incredible, you know, revolution, almost, almost another industrial revolution, which is AI. And it creates opportunities on a, in a, you know, in a much broader spectrum of, 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 of stocks. And that's great. Yeah, no, it's um, it, it is interesting, uh, you know, for sure, and and um, you know how this uh, flows around. Like the interesting thing is, uh, you know, you brought up, you know Microsoft who signed the, the contract. Like their share price is relatively flat through all this, yeah. uh, you know. Which and you think you were like, well, this is the, you know, the big one, uh, you know, starting to to throw its weight around, and and actually, you know, those plans about how the data centers will get built, powered, how this will all, all arrive. Um, you know, maybe it's some of the other areas that, uh, you, where it hasn't been thought about as much that, uh, you know, that might be a little bit of a beneficiary. Yeah. And, and then going to the China, Chinese stimulus, uh, you know, I was talking to Phil Langham, uh, who, uh, you know, emerging market manager that we've had on, uh, the, the, the podcast before. And, you know, he's, he's been underweight China for a long, long time and quite disillusioned with the, with the prospect and not, not that. Not not disillusioned with with the Chinese economy or the prospects for growth in China. You know they're still good. They're just not what they used to be. So there's other areas that are more exciting: India, Vietnam, etc. Bangladesh is another one he's talked about. 
but he he heard that he got looked at this announcement and as you say opinion was this one is may, maybe different and so he's starting to l look differently at yeah. the chinese stock market and and again you know, if you've got if if you've got the U.S. with rates coming down and and maybe maybe economic activity bottoming out, earnings bottoming out, and we're we're moving on to growth in the future, boy, you you throw China in there if it if it starts you know it starts growing at five instead of three again or six, whatever it might be, uh, then then you got some really interesting stuff going on around the world with the economy and 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 profitability of companies. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's I think that's fair. Uh, um, you know, I think there was there was one other piece of news that uh, you know not as significant on a on a global scale that we should probably cover off as well, uh, just from a Canadian banking standpoint was you know the government came out with some changes uh, on the level of mortgage they would insure and the amortization period and um, you know you can you can view this a number of different ways but uh, you can now get CMHC insurance on on a on a house up to a million five. Okay. And that changes the down payment dynamics, and um, it is it is one it is one the beginnings of a solution where you know I think like the one um, conundrum between uh, uh, supply and demand in yeah. say some of the big Canadian province or Canadian cities was okay uh, if I'm a, if I'm going to bring new supply it might be costing me twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars a foot or something like this yeah. to build new supply. And, you know, that was putting like a thousand square foot condominium at a million two. So didn't get the uh, benefit of CMHC. Yet the ability to pay might have been around nine fifty or a thousand dollars a square foot or something like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, these are rough numbers, but it had this gap between, uh, you know, there's an affordability issue. And then but then you can't bring supply on at those prices. And, um, you know, I thought that that CMHC thing was kind of interesting because it you know, does it does it help, uh, you know, kind of begin to grease the wheels of the condominium market where there's been oversupply, there's no new building, uh, you know, that that uh, dynamic, I think, is um, you know, worth highlighting for our Canadian oriented listeners, because, um, you know, when you think about the down payment, you know, you need you need 5% on the first 500, 10% after that 30 year amortization, all of a sudden on on a house in that you know, kind of million and a half dollar range, uh, the difference between renting and buying uh, started to narrow quite a bit. Uh, yeah, it, it, it and, 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 you know, when we talk about the Canadian economy and, you know, one of the hurdles that, or, or I guess headwinds that the Canadian economy is facing uh, is, is housing, housing affordability. We've talked about from, from, from a bank perspective, you know, all these mortgages that are going to start to roll over in 2025 2026 off you know low twos uh, as a rate and you know right now they they'd roll into four and a half or five but with rates coming down and then you you extend you 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 create new supply in in kind of that sweet spot of pricing for the builder and for the buyer if the buyer can get access to capital so the government comes in and guarantees it so it's it's it all kind of it, it it all kind of works out and is going to help get the the canadian economy through that uh, potential roadblock yeah and and uh, you know i don't know i don't think this necessarily means like up up and away for house prices uh but you know when when you can help uh you know uh take off the one side that people worry about Right. Like, you know, there's a range of outcomes and people always say, well, I'm worried about the tail outcome. And if I can make that a little bit worse, if I can lower that negative option, then it kind of helps, uh, you know, people think about everything else. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, you, you might even say we've seen a little bit of that in the in the stock market when the when the Fed starts cutting. Right. It's the same idea. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 All right, Stu. Well, uh, great catching up. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go and have a bowl of soup. I'm because uh, now that I'm talking about it, I'm. It, it's really. Do you, do you like pho? Uh, I've had it a few times. Yeah, it's it's quite tasty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really tasty. So I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go do that. If I'm in Vancouver, I might as well uh, give it a whirl. I know you got a big meeting coming up, so we'll we'll let you go. But thanks, uh, thanks again, and see you see you next uh, Tuesday. Great. Thanks very much, Dave. This recording has been provided by RBC Global Asset Management Inc 
for informational purposes only and is not intended to be investment or financial advice. You should consult your own legal, accounting, tax, investment, or financial planning advisors before engaging in any transactions.